Namaskaram and welcome in today's video where we will delve into the questions that has intrigued humanity for ages. Does a master or a guru always speak the truth or could there be moments when they withhold it for the sake of their disciples growth? It is a profound inquiry that cuts to the core of our understanding of spiritual guidance. Throughout history, revered masters and gurus have illuminated the path of their followers, but the nuance of their teachings often leaves us pondering. Are their words always absolute truth or do they sometimes cloak wisdom in layers of mysteries? Join us as we explore this enigma together, seeking clarity amidst the complexities of spiritual guidance. Prepare to embark on a journey of insight and discovery and discover as we unravel the mysteries of the guru-disciple relationship and delve into the depth of truth itself. Oh, I think in a way I've already answered this question, you are in the absolutist mode. Uh, there was... My, I had a grand uncle who passed away a few years ago at... at the age of 101. He was a very humorous and gregarious man <laughs> So he had a son, an adopted son. And that boy, just not interested in the education, nor was I. But I was... I always made sure I went to the next class, because I didn't want to be left behind. But that boy sort of not doing well in school. So when we went for vacation to their place, so uh, my grand-uncle asked me, What class are you? I said, I'm sixth standard. He said, You liar! Just last year you told me five, and now you're saying six. Look at our boy, always he's in number five. He tells the truth. This is the kind of question this is. Yes, I said it's sunrise. Evening you asked me, what is it? I said sunset. Oh, you're lying? What can I do for you, huh? Hello? You flipped a coin and it fell, I said it's heads. You flip, flip the coin, I said, oh, it's tails, oh, you're lying. But suppose if it's multifaceted, let's say you threw dice, I said one, I said four, I said two, I said three, I said six, I'm lying. What can I do with you? You should live on a flat earth. Unfortunately, it's round and it's spinning, never shows the same face to you again. This is why there are two dimensions of life. There's one called, you know, one that is absolute. There are certain dimensions of life which are absolute, certain other dimensions of life which are constantly changing. In a way, this is represented within us as energy and in the world as uh, well, in human terms, masculine and feminine, Pingala and Ida, sun and moon. Sun is always round, every day round, perfect round. Hello? Did you ever see a square one? Uh, in California, you might have when you're on certain things. <laughs> one day it came up square like that, you know <laughs> But look at the damn moon. Every day it's a different shape. Hello? One or two days it even disappears. Every day, different shape. So this is what is confounding people even about women, because every day different shape. Man is very solar oriented, he wants every day round, like that. Like somebody said, <laughs> I don't remember, some American author I think said this, he said, the difference between men and women is, uh, in marriage, women are always expecting the man to change and they're disappointed, he's not changing, he's still the same young brat. 
men are always expecting the woman should not change. As she was at eighteen, the same way she should be when she is sixty. See, one is moon, another is sun. <laughs> Every day round. This is not like that. Every day it's different, wonky. <laughs> so, uh, if I say the moon is round, am I lying? If I say the moon is just a sliver today, am I lying? No, no, that's how it is. But you are an absolutist. You have come to me thinking I'm going to give you a new religion. No, I'm not going to give you such comfort so that you can sleep well. No, I want you disturbed. Hello? I want you disturbed because if ignorance does not make you sleep less, then that's a tragedy. You're ignorant and you can sleep well. That's a tragedy. People think ignorance is bliss. No, ignorance is a tragedy. What do you think? Hello? Ignorance is the worst tragedy that human beings have always suffered and continue to suffer. Yes or no? But somebody says ignorance is bliss. All the best for them. This happened. In the American Airlines, a man was sitting in the first class compartment and to his amazement, a macaw parrot was in his neighboring seat, wearing his seatbelt and sitting like that. And then before the airplane takes off, the parrot asks, I want scotch whiskey. The hostess says, no, till we take off, we cannot serve you. And in the choicest of words, the parrot abuses her, a whole litany of everything, you know. You are in Los Angeles, I don't have to teach you anything. Full dictionary throws at the woman and she's like, doesn't know what to do, but abuses her. Then after it takes off, again the parrot screams, I want my scotch. So on the other side, they're doing ting ting tong ting, you know, bottles and glasses and something. And the parrot screams, you moron, what are you doing there? Why so much delay? The man orders the coke. And he waits and looks at the parrot's power. Parrot screams and yells the way it treats people. Puts his weight around quite a bit. Then uh, he sees this and is very impressed by the parrot. Then parrot on orders one more round and again screams at everybody because it's delayed and the man orders another coke. Now he thought he should also do it. I'm just sitting like a wimp, not asking for my... He also helps. Then this match continues that uh, asks for food and uh, else and this guy asks for food and yells at the thing. Then the crew has a small conference. They consult the pilot and they come. They pick up both of them, open the door and throw them out of the flight. Both of them are going down and the parrot says, you really have guts for a man without wings. <laughs> Ignorance is not bliss because life is a phenomenon, a most dynamic phenomenon. But you want to be a fossil. Hello? You want to be a fossil, everything dead certain because you, su you suffer uncertainty, isn't it? Hello? What is called as security in life is fossilized life. Nothing should change. No, it changes what to do. All the time it's changing, it's very dynamic. So, as it's my commitment and duty, and it's my mission to see or to show people what I see. Today, moon is just a sliver. Should I say, moon is round? 
Yes, it is round somewhere, I know that. If you look at it from the other side, it is round. But in our experience, it's just a sliver today. Hello? No, moon is round. It's not like that. Life, on one level, it is round. It is true, it is round, always round. But in our experience, it keeps changing. So there are different aspects to life. If you think everything is black and white, everything is yes, no, then uh, you must join the Communist Party. What is useful, what is not useful, it's just decided. Nothing is not useful. Hello? Hello? Is there anything not useful? You may think it's not useful, it has its own life, it has its own use, yes or no? A small little stick, is it useful? You may not use it, somebody else is using it. A grasshopper, is it useless? Hello? No, it's useful, it has a full-fledged life of its own. So you are thinking of everything as absolute according to your ideology or your emotional status or your philosophy or your religion. Everything is absolute, this way or that way, good, bad. I keep seeing this even in the news channels, <coughs> international news channels from… Um, national news channels from United States. Actually, the anchor is speaking good guys and bad guys. I ca I couldn't believe this. You mean… you meet the most bad guy, whoever you think is the worst bad guy, he also thinks he is good. Hello? Yes or no? Who is bad to us, who is good to us is a context of where we are, what we are getting at that moment. Yes or no? You must all at least stop this much. You should never use the word bad weather. It's raining, it's snowing, it is hot, but it's not bad weather. Hello? Who are you to decide weather is bad? Hello? <laughs> Don't use such words because this is all establishing Division, 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 division. Absolutism means divide, 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 divide. In the end, fight each other and die. This is all coming because we have an absolutist mind. Mind should be fluid, only then it's intelligent. If it becomes absolute in some way, it becomes a concrete block. With a concrete block, you can butt other people in the face. Hello? This is one use of the head, isn't it? You can butt people in the face or you can use your brains to do something meaningful and worthwhile for you and for every other life on this planet. And this is not civics, this is not environmental science, this is spiritual process. That you use your head to do something wonderful to yourself and to everybody. Or you use your head to make somebody's nose bleed. You can use the head both ways, right? As we conclude our exploration into the complexities of spiritual guidance, let's take a moment to reflect on the profound insight shared by Sadhguru. In contemplating whether a master or a guru always speak the truth, we are confronted with the intricacies of truth itself. Sadhguru remind us of the sacred duty to present reality as it is, even if it may challenge or discomfort us. Throughout history, great masters have navigated this delicate balance, guiding their disciple with wisdom that transcends conventional understanding. Yet, as Sadhguru suggests, the journey of spiritual growth often required us to comfort uncomfortable truth and transcend our limitations. 
so as we continue our path of self discovery and enlightenment let us remain open to the guidance of, of our gurus knowing that their words are crafted not merely for souls but for our ultimate evolution this journey is not about just finding easy answers but about embracing the profound truth that lead us to a deeper understanding and inner transformation Thank you for joining in today's exploration and we will see you tomorrow. Until then, please take care. Namaskaram.